Hey guys, welcome back to Pass Money Plan. We're going to be reacting to or talking about this topic right here. Um, it's one that I think every investor will experience, especially like at the beginning of their journey, they're going to start seeing changes in friends and family. But um, having the knowledge in investing, having the knowledge on finances and no one really cares and no one comes to you and asks you for any kind of financial advice. It's surprising if you're naive to that part of the world. But Kirby... Go ahead. You can start this off. I know I'm going to take a step. I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to take a step back. Of It's not even if you're an investor. If you're just financially responsible with your money. If you just if you're just a saver, if you somebody who save money and always have money set to the side to take care of what you're supposed to do as an adult. People, I mean, success leave clues, you know. I remember when I was in the military and I came back from a deployment and, you know, everybody come and buy cars, you know, they still financing them, but they go buy new cars and stuff like that. And then one, one day I'm talking to another soldier and they haven't bought anything. They haven't bought any cars. And it's about a week or two after we got back and I asked them, I was like, so, Hey, what you going to do with your money? And then they said, they're going to buy a car. And I said, they were like, yeah, I'm about to buy a car. And I said, oh, you know, the the in the military, the the next question is, so how much are those monthly payments? And then they was like, monthly payments? I'm going to go pay cash for it. And I was like, what is it? Because I outranked the soldier and I couldn't go pay cash for a car because I was just jacking off money every which way possible. But successfully, like, so I knew that she was a super saver when she said that. Because, like I said, I outranked her. I was on the same tour. And I seen that she could go buy a car cash and it looked better than my car that I was buying finance. And I was, and I'm sitting here paying money to the man, paying high interest rates and stuff like that. So it leaves clues. So like Alex, everybody know you ain't saving, you ain't spending two pennies. You ain't spending two pennies. If you spend one, you're trying to, if you spend two, you're trying to get one back. But people know that. And then, like, for me, in my arena, I've been doing this since 2009. 2009. Saving before that, but started investing in 2009. Many of my family, friends, know what I do. But they will call me with the pretense of trying to learn financial advice, but Actually listening to it and doing it? None. I mean, and it's a very small that would even call me. But none will actually do it. And on a large scale, like, you know, I mean, some people in my, my family and friends know how many, you know, real estate deals I've done. Not one has ever called. Not one has ever called when they went to go buy a house or something like that to ask, is this the right way to go about the process? And I didn't do the process. Hundreds of times, but they never asked me one time, family, friends, or anything, of how the process worked or what should I do or if I'm getting a good deal or not. It's crazy. Yeah. I think, and I mean, it's the same with me. I think that I would like for people to ask me more. I have nothing against, you know, trying to help people with their financial path or whatever if i can give any kind of advice or tell them what i would do or what i do differently but i get that as well no one yeah nobody asks and i remember you had warned me too like or you had told me from the beginning like no one's gonna care and that was a shock to me because i'm like how could people not care about you know getting better with their money but it's just people prefer to be irresponsible and they prefer to live in the moment and feel good and all this they don't want to take the steps necessary to make those sacrifices or um, to change their lifestyle. And the funny one is, and I'll, I'll, I'll just say, I got to have an aunt that works in a bank and everyone goes to her when they have financial questions, but no one cares to even ask me, which is funny. Um, I just think it's funny because I, as we uh, talk about on this channel is, forget the title, what has that person actually accomplished? What does that person actually do in any scenario? If 
you wouldn't listen to a fat person telling you what you need to eat, you know, what kind of diet you need to be on, what kind of exercises you need to do. You wouldn't listen to a doctor who has terrible health and isn't doing what he's telling you to do. You wouldn't listen to, or I mean, I, I'd say you wouldn't listen to, but people do, people do. They just, they look at the titles and they don't look at what the person has actually accomplished. And that's something that's, yeah, it's very true. It's very real and something that people, you know, they need to learn to see as well, as you said, because I've seen this with people that are savers is they're the saver of the family. The family goes to them. They get asked for money. They're always the one helping the family, but always giving the handouts rather than, you know, putting their foot down and saying, hey, why don't I just show you how to do this? And if you don't want to learn how to do it, then it's not my responsibility to take care of you. You know, that's that's the way I view it. Yeah, it goes back to the adage of, you know, you give him you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. You teach him how to fish, he'll eat forever. And that's my philosophy. I mean, people people have come to me and say, hey, why can't I just give you the money? Because they don't want to do the work. Why can't I just give you the money and you invest it for me? And I always say, then your your financial wealth or your financial dependency is dependent on my lifespan. Meaning, if I die tomorrow, then you have nothing. You wouldn't even know what to do. So why, why don't I teach you how to do it so you can create as much wealth as you want, and then you can teach it to your kids and your kids' kids, and then you create generational wealth, or you live better than you're living now, and your family can also. And those are the things that that they don't under they don't grasp, or let's not say they don't grasp. Let's be real. They just want to take the shortcut in life. They just want all the shortcuts. They could because nobody want to change, no matter how bad it is, no matter how bad it is financially, nobody want to change their lifestyle to do something new. They want to just add on, say, oh, I still want to do everything I want to do and make money. That's why most people don't invest. They say, oh, I don't have no money. But if you cut out 30% of the stuff that you do that you blow money on, then you have money to invest. But nobody want to give up none of that. They want them to do everything. And that's why it's only a 1% and a 99% or 10% and a 90%. Because the 90% want to do everything that they're still doing and find a, a super lottery ticket to they can make money to continue, continue to do more craziness that they're doing. They're just lazy. People are lazy. And when you say titles, titles, that's that's a good one. Because I remember when I first started, again, when I started in 2008, well, I started saving before that. But when I started in 2008, 2009, I didn't have a degree. And I was developing my, my investment philosophy. And then by 2000, let's say 2010, I had it locked in. I had it locked in. This is my philosophy. And then whenever I talk to anybody about my investment philosophy, they were like, okay, okay. Like, what is your degree in? And then I would say, I don't have a degree, but a degree wouldn't change my investment philosophy. And then you could see automatically they would just dismiss everything I said because I didn't have a degree. So, but I knew that. So what I did, I said, okay, well, let me go get this degree in finance so people stop dismissing what I'm saying. And then so I got the degree in finance. My investment philosophy didn't change. And... Now people ask, do you got a degree? I say, yeah. They still don't listen. They still don't, you know, go through the process, still want to go do the work. And I remember when I told you, and FYI, y'all, when I met Alex, Alex thought I was absolutely crazy. When I told him that your wealth and growing wealth is a lonely road, nobody's going to care. Only thing they're going to do is look at it and subliminally say, okay, well, now I know Alex got money. I can go ask her for money. Alex was thinking like, oh no, my family, we're like the, we're like the best family on earth. This will never happen. This is what he's thinking. He didn't say it out loud, but I knew what he was thinking because I had many of these conversations before. And then he'd be like, no, no, my friends, they, they're they're prestige, you know. So that they wouldn't do that. And then he was like, he was thinking like, once I learn this, everybody's gonna want to know, everybody's gonna be calling me. I'm gonna be the next Warren Buffett 2.0. I'm gonna be giving speeches. 
he saw lights and he saw lights in the uh in the marquee. He saw his name on events and venues. And I tell him, like, that's not how it's gonna happen. I'm like, nobody's gonna care. And you're gonna look up years later and then wonder why you're the only one that's still doing it if you're still doing it then. And then now we fast forward, and then Alex sees it, and then he's just like, what the hell? Yeah. And because I always share the stories of my life, my situation, my the people that I know, and then people just think, man, you got a crazy family. Everybody got a crazy family. You just don't know it until you actually look at it. And then so right. that's that's how it goes. With all that being said, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below if you got a crazy family. Uh, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>